Hello, are we live? Let's see. Okay. Um, hi. Can you guys see me? Okay. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I couldn't see it on my link. Hopefully my link is working on Instagram. I kept clicking it and it's just taking me to like blank screen. Maybe it's the wrong link. I don't know. Hi, you guys. How are you? How was your Sunday? Hi, Denise. Hi, Avery. Hi, Diana. Hi, John. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Bella. Rachel's here. Hi, Rachel. I was just on the phone with her. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Gail. Hi, Lorraine. Good evening. Kendall, Caitlin. Yeah, I'm going to be visiting Rachel soon, actually. So you guys are going to see some live streams from Seattle. She'll probably say hi. Okay. Let's get into the numbered man for today. I don't have a ton on this one because they're in the Stoddard family, which I don't know if you guys remember, uh, but number six was Bill Stoddard. And I don't know, maybe I'll refresh your memory. He was our um, seminary teacher. And we, we, I actually really liked him. He was a funny guy. Um, but this guy... Number 75 is Bill Stoddard's son. So he worked at the mine most of his life, the coal mine, and then his dad's trucking company. I feel like there was a lot of, well, not, I think most people who know him knew that there was a lot of pressure on him to be, this is the thing in the cult, like if you have uh, members of the family who leaves the, the cult, who leave the order, there's a lot of pressure on you to stay and like turn, turn it around, right? Make the family stay in line. So I think that's what happened with this number 75 is that he had uh, an older brother that left. So there was more pressure on him to stay and be a devout order member. And he did, but he also was, it's not like he was a bad person. He was a pretty good guy. He was very, um, I guess the words that people use to describe him is a yes man. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was pretty loyal, dedicated. And um, he did join the, uh, let's see. I actually don't know his like married life and all of that. I'll have to do more. I should, that's the thing is like the Stoddard family, they, most of them lived at the mine, the coal mine. And I was born and raised in like the Salt Lake City area, right? So I knew all of the Salt Lake polygamists. I even knew more about the Browns because I went up to Idaho to like help with like roguing season and stuff like that. Hope you guys had a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I don't know. You guys want to share what you guys did for Mother's Day? I do anything. I did want to say too. I know I was talking about doing a um, a Jacob Hicks video. I've been working really hard on that video, but it's probably not going to be out till tomorrow. But I'm gonna, I'm basically talking about how how long his sentencing is. So we got we're, we're talking about Jacob and what what he said, what was said in court for his case, for his wife Sally's case for his mom, because his mom's doing some prison time, and his younger brother, um, Isaiah. So we have Isaiah, his mom, Rachel, uh, his wife, Sally, and then his sentence, 
and we also briefly touch on LeBron sentencing. Um, it's interesting to see like what they decided to bring up in court to try to prove their case. And it's also interesting to see how, you know, which ones turned on the order and which ones were loyal to the end to the order. So that's what's coming next. Uh, and a lot of people were like, well, a few people, like, is Jacob a numbered man? Like, where does he fit into, like, the, the puzzle? Jacob is number 95. So we will be eventually talking about his number. We're on 75 now. I know 25 more and we'll be at 100. But so once we hit 95, we'll start talking about Jacob. But Jacob is full brothers to member number 69, Daniel Jr. They're full brothers. But, I mean, Daniel Jr. never really worked with Jacob, so he didn't get involved in any of that. But yeah, my, my video should hopefully be coming out tomorrow. It's about roughly 30 minutes, but it dissects like how Jacob got involved with all of the, the tax fraud that ultimately wound him up. It's crazy though to think like how I'm still like baffled at how much money he was able to steal from the government. <laughs> because like what he did was, and this is something that I didn't realize until I started doing more research. He was able to apply for the tax credit. I don't know if, how much people know about this. I didn't know anything about this, but I'll, I'm going to explain it as a, if I was explaining it to myself. I had no idea. I was clueless on this whole thing. But so he starts washing renewable energy, right? So it's like this biodiesel. But apparently, if you, what's it called? Like B99 or something. There's like a, there's like a grade of biodiesel that the government will say if you produce a, a gallon of each like tax for the dollar per gallon. So they were making it look like they were producing a they were and they were just shipping it. And and I heard that they were literally shipping gallons of just water. Just water. It wasn't even biodiesel at this point. They just had to make sure the paperwork said that they were producing the biodiesel. Did anyone else follow the story? It was like national news. It caused a lot of like eyes to look at the order. Oh wow. Did I read that right? I'm 75's only wife. Would you like to share anything about number 75? Because I literally, I shared all I knew. I don't know much about number 75. <laughs> but I do, I will say, I, from what I saw of Bill Stoddard, I actually really enjoyed Bill Stoddard. Is the audio echoey? Sorry. I might be, this, this live maybe is going to be shorter than it usually is, especially because I want to continue editing. I really wanted to have that video out. Here we have seventy five's wife. I mean, I'm ready to hear anything you want to say, Dana. <laughs> Dana Stoddard. Do you have anything to say? Eskel's here. Hi, Beck. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Becca. Hi, Popcorn. Dana says, I know that his younger brother received the patriarch because 75 doesn't live the law. Okay, so you're his only wife and he didn't live. Okay. 
polygamy. How many kids did Bill have? I actually don't know this. I don't know how many kids Bill had. Number 46. Is that right? Honestly, like if Dana wants to take away the show, I'm, I'm just going to open it up for you because I would love to hear more history from, from the actual family. So Bill had nine kids. And number 75 was the second oldest. Is that right? Of the nine kids? Was number 75 in the military? I know Bill was his dad, number 75's dad. Hi, TPZ. Hi, Susan. Hi. What'd you say? He lost his toes at 17 working at the mine. It's sad because that's not, it's not surprising. There's a lot of people who, who ended up having some severe injuries from working at the mine. Did not join the military. Okay. Thank you for answering the questions. This is fascinating to me. I don't know if it's fascinating to anyone else, but I like hearing these stories. Yes, American Greed, that is what we watched. Yes, if you want to see um, more information on Jake, the, the thing is, the documentaries I've been seeing on Jacob Kingston are... Um, there's not many that say like the the prison time that he was sentenced to, but there's a lot of documentaries on leading up to him getting um, caught basically at the airport. But yeah, you can look up American Greed. If you just YouTube Jacob Kingston Biodiesel Fraud, you'll find a lot of little documentaries on on the whole thing. Hi, Aquanta. Okay, Dana says six kids. Okay. Wow. Modest size. <laughs> you guys might be seeing a quanta on my channel pretty soon. Right, a quanta. He's going to come visit. Losing his toes, how would he adapt to walking? I know, I hear like losing your toes, your balance is like severely affected. <laughs> But I've I've never had that happen, so I wouldn't know. I almost feel like you probably adapt pretty quick. But it's just someone who has no experience in it saying an opinion. As far as being a yes man, that is totally true. Okay, that's what I was told. Like that was the main thing that I was told about him is that he was a yes man, which can be good and bad, right? Hi, Mary. Thank you for the donation. It's good to see you. You love this live tea. Me too. <laughs> love your hat. Thank you. Dana says, bad for me. Really? Does that mean that he was a yes man? Not for you? Or putting other people first before you? I mean, that's what I'm interpreting. Is Aquanta your aunt? You know, Aquanta actually, so here's some history from the Johnson side. So my dad is Johnson. Um, so my grandma, Isabel Johnson, so she's the, the sixth wife of Brother Rotel, who was the leader before Brother Paul, right? So she actually originally came, like her dad is Price Johnson, who originally came from the FLDS. So I actually have bloodlines that people that I'm related to in the FLDS. And Aquanta, Aquanta Johnson, she's one of those that's related to me. And we just found this out, I want to say two years ago, that we're basically like long lost cousins. So she was born in the FLDS, Aquanta. Um, and through that lineage of the Johnsons that stayed in the FLDS, and then I obviously born in the, the Kingston group with Price Johnson who left the FLDS. It's interesting to hear that story though, because in our Price Johnson is this hero who was guided by God to join the order, whereas the Quanta's the 
the FLDS, it was like Christ Johnson was this bad seed that left the FLDS and joined Satan or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So to answer your question, we're cousins. <laughs> not she's not my aunt. <laughs> Jacob got 18 years in prison. What relation is he to you? Okay, so Jacob, I wish so bad I could have posted the video before this conversation because then you guys, I could answer all your questions. But maybe next week we'll open it up for questions if you have any questions after I post this video. So Jacob got 18 years in prison. But people, a lot of people don't know this, because he spent four years, they had him locked up for four years while they were going to court and getting into sentencing. The judge allowed that four years to go towards his 18 year prison sentence. So technically he only has 14 years, but my relation to Jacob, so sorry, this is kind of confusing. I explained this in the video too. So Jacob's dad is Daniel, right? And then his mom is Rachel Ann, who I believe is the first wife of Daniel. And Rachel Ann had 13 kids with him. And Jacob is one of the oldest ones, right? So we have Daniel. Daniel's right here, right? Daniel is the brother to Paul, the leader, the brother to Jesse, the brother to David. The, so this, we remember the seven brothers, right? Daniel's one of those. Jacob is the son of Daniel, which means I am Jacob's cousin. The same relation I am to like Allison, Jessica, Chanel, because all of their dads are Daniel. So Jacob Kingston is technically all of their half brother. Jacob Kingston is Jessica's half brother, Andrea's half brother. Nell, Allison, yeah. So that's the relation. I for, for a while I kept calling him my uncle. He's not my uncle. He's he's my first cousin. <laughs> Daniel is my uncle. Hi, Christine. Middle of the night here, but I woke up. <laughs> That is interesting name for FLDS. Aquanta? I know. I told her that. I was like, where, where did they get that name, Aquanta? <laughs> Amanda, I'm done. What? I'm dying with three kids. Thank you for the donation, Mary. Thank you, Amanda, for talking to me, Instagram. Of course. I love talking to you, Mary. It's pretty normal for judges to count the accrued prison time against the sentence. Really? I just thought it was interesting that Jacob thought, because Jacob seemed to have the most involvement in the order um, and that they allowed him to do that. but. His younger brother, Isaiah, got 12 years. And I feel like he wasn't as in, no, he definitely wasn't as involved. He just kind of was like, you know, doing what he was told. But yeah, ended up with 12 years. Um, but Levon, Levon got the most prison time, which I should have done more research on that. I was more dedicated to like Kingston time. So maybe I'll do more research on Levon's because Levon got 40 years in prison. Levon's probably going to die in prison. Infamous Tom Green went to the order before prison and death. Did all the wives that stayed marry a numbered man? Good question, Lisa. Tom Green, uh, pretty much all of his wives after he died married. We were just talking about Daniel Jr. If you watch Cold Cup of Coffee, number 69. Do I mention that in that? I did do a whole episode on Tom Green, though. And so, so Daniel Jr.'s number is 69, and Tom Green died with the number 269. So I guess, like, this is what I was hearing, is that Tom Green was, he was friends with Paul and his brothers when they were growing up, but he was closest with Daniel. He liked Daniel the most, which says a lot about him. <laughs> I don't know. But so he really liked Daniel, really, I feel like gravitated towards that family and wanted his wives to join that family. And that's why he ultimately got number 269. I think there was some type of agreement that he knew that his wives were going to marry number 69, which is Daniel Jr. And then Tom Green got number 269. But the interesting thing is we're going to be talking about 
Number 79 coming up. I feel like this is how Tom Green got introduced or affiliated with the order. That Tom Green, um, one of his young, young wives, was sisters to the woman that number 79 was trying to court. That's in the Pratt family. We'll be talking about him in a few weeks, 79. And I think, I mean, maybe someone can clarify if I'm wrong. I think that's how Tom Green started associating with order members, was number 79 was trying to court Green's wife's like, younger sister. But I don't know. All the polygamists kind of know each other. Tom Green is a weird case, though, because Tom Green wasn't just born in this polygamous community. He actually was married and had a wife and had a normal kind of semi-normal life in the church in his faith. And the research on polygamy just got so obsessed with it that he wanted to live it himself to the point where he left his wife, left that whole family behind to pursue the, the pursuit of polygamy which is so interesting to me. But yeah, his, his, I think most of his wives that he joined the order with married number 69 after he passed away of COVID. I, Jenica says, I was a nanny for five children once upon a time. I loved it, but it was a good life lesson before I got married and decided it wasn't for me. Yeah, I think that everyone should take a class on parenting before having kids, for sure. I guess when there's that many people to get creative with names. Honestly, I don't feel like people in the order are creative. I feel like people in the FLDS are more creative. Yolanda, right? there's some common names like Marianne, but Aquanta, Yolanda, <laughs> Rosie. I don't think I've ever seen Rosie except for the one in I wonder whose number is going to be 666. <laughs> I know. I wonder if he'll skip that one. I watched your episode and creepy circumstances of Tom Green. Great videos. Thank you for answering my question. Yeah, if you, if anyone's interested in hearing more about Tom Green, there's a whole episode on him talking, and he just, he just talks and talks and talks. <laughs> he loves the sound of his voice. Hi, G Line. G line J eighty eight. Dana, you like my videos? That makes me happy. Honestly, it I love when people like. I I feel like I get so much out of these lives, so it makes me feel really happy to know that you guys get a lot out of these lives too. And it also makes me happy to know that relatives and people who have left the order, and even people in the order, get a lot out of these. It makes me feel like we can still kind of be family <laughs> regardless of what they what the what the norms are in the order thank you for joining though and giving information and insight hi enuma he converted from regular LDS, Tom Green. Yeah, he was a, yep, all wives, stepdaughters, and their relatives. That's the grossest thing about Tom Green. Sorry, every time anyone gets me on Tom Green, I just like, let's talk, let's talk shit right now. Tom Green, who, he, he, oh, he marries all these underage girls. And then it, that wasn't even enough. It's like he married, he married, I think, two women who had daughters already from like a previous marriage. It wasn't enough to marry those women, but he was the daughters that the women brought into the, it's like so twisted. I can't even think of a scenario in any any like I just can't even wrap my brain around having a daughter, marrying a guy, and then having my husband marry my daughter. Like it's so weird. It's so I don't care if it's for God. No. Oh shoot. Is my laptop gonna be like? <coughs> That might be okay. We might be almost done anyways. <laughs> Amanda, your skin looks so glowy lately. I would love to see your new skincare routine. Thank you. I showed the uh, new product that I've been using on, I want to say number 72 or 73. But yeah, I, knew my, I, can, I can send you a picture of it. 
It just makes me look sweaty. <laughs> That's all it is. I just look sweaty. <laughs> but I'll show you what it is. The product. It really just hydrates my skin. But yeah, I've had a, a consistent skincare routine from the beginning of this year. That was like one of my resolutions. I wanted to take better care of my skin. So I'm glad you know this. Thank you. I, I'm one they call someone that is on the fence. I'm a rebel. Ooh, I love that. On the fence. This is the thing, though. It's like, isn't it hard to be on the fence for so long? Because uh, you can only play that game for so long. I tried to play it, and I was kicked off that fence so fast. I feel like boys in the cult can play that game longer, but girls, it's like you, they, they have a role for the women when they're very young. And if you don't fit that role, you know, you're in or you're out. Oh, yeah. OMG, I just found your channel a couple days ago, the Family Bush episode, and I'm obsessed. Oh, thank you, Jessica. You, your siblings and cousins, they're all amazing for checking out. So and brave. Thank you, Jessica. I'm so glad you found my channel. I think you'll like it here. We go live every Sunday, and it's really fun. I look, I really look forward to seeing you on every Sunday. We haven't missed a single Sunday. For at least 75 episodes. We have to do something big for number 100. If anyone wants to, if anyone wants to suggest any ideas for episode 100, be my guest. I also really, I was inspired by last week, how you guys were giving me all the ABC order standards, but you were like mocking them. I want to do a full episode on that. Is Rachel still here? Do you remember Rachel when we were doing that, when we were in the order? We would just make up our own ABC order standards. <laughs> I think I want to do a full episode on that just for funsies. It's so hard to believe the FLDS sex stories are true. It makes such great TV, but so hard to believe y'all are real life folks. Yeah, and this is, I, oh, I was talking about this actually. I feel like, um, every person I've met from the FLDS has such a genuine soul. They're just such kind, real people. Like, I don't know. I've never met someone from the FLDS that I didn't genuinely like. <laughs> and it's, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, the stories are really, really shocking. Um, and they've been so much. But they're so, like, genuinely honest at least the ones that I've met, they're, they just, they're really, really good people. And I don't know 100% what it is. I think it's like trauma makes you grow. <laughs> I don't know. Are they out? So as far as I know, I think Tom Green did have a few wives leave him. But yeah, there's some that are still living the lifestyle in the order. Um, yeah, I agree, Melanie. Like that, and that's how you should be. I feel like that is the normal response. <laughs> I don't understand the logic on why you would think that God would want your daughter to marry your husband. That is just, I don't, I don't get that. One of his stepdaughters first said he was. Ew. If any send me links to the because all I saw when I was doing my research was those documentaries where all the wives were one of the things that bothered me so much one of his wives was like he's such a great man that I would be selfish to want to keep him all to myself so I, I want to share him because he's so great I was like the logic behind that is so <sighs> what about you like you're great but you're not good enough to share with another man okay interesting Ooh, I just hated that and then the episode that was the same episode that I was watching he was his son was trying to court this like 15 year old girl like people really liked her but Tom Crane whenever she would come over he would dress in his nicest outfit to try to seduce the young girl away from his son it's like do you not have enough wives already he already had like seven at the time like you you are so greedy you want your son's lover because god forbid he have one and you have seven. Ooh, it's so annoying i 
I'm getting mad. <laughs> I'm getting mad I'm thinking about it. Technically, he married the daughter first with one and then her mother, and the other case was the opposite. Ugh. I don't even want to go there with this conversation. I don't even want I don't even want to imagine it. <laughs> Anthony says you should never what did he say? <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> oh, where did it go? You should never date the mother and daughter. Ew, yes. Wait, you shouldn't even have to be your man. I don't understand why this is something that he needs to learn. And he didn't learn because he died before he ever even decided that was he went to jail too. Whatever. <sighs> Sounds like I need to make a whole another episode on it. Maybe they can be tricked into thinking they have run out of sometimes before they get six six six. Tina says, I wish they would kick me off. It would be easier for me. Yeah. I heard a lot of people actually from the order who said that there's a lot of thought processes, but one of the most interesting ones that I that I heard was uh members who wished that they were brainwashed. They wish so bad that they could that the brainwashing worked on them so they could just stay and be in the family. But because the brainwashing didn't work, it caused them to have to leave because they couldn't live a lie. So I feel like there's a mixture of cult members. There's the ones that believe it, obviously, and they're like, oh, we're gonna go to heaven. Then there's the ones that don't believe it, but they pretend to so that they can be a part of their family. And so sometimes I think that they really live like that till they die, some of them. Others cannot live a lie. And they don't believe in it, and they can't live the lie, so they have to get out. And sometimes in that category, they wish so bad that they could have been brainwashed, that they could have been more understand why the brainwashing didn't work on them, and they feel almost, but they have they gotta go because it just doesn't. It, they are the type of person where it doesn't in line with their values and morals, so they can only last so long there. I don't know how. There can be that different where where like those two are similar. They both believe the same, right? The order is wrong, but one can fake it and one can't. Now, obviously, I was in this category that couldn't, and there's some that can stay in the category that can fake it because it's worth it for them to be with their family, which is understandable. Right? How much time do we have on here? I only have a little bit of time left. I don't have a lot of battery life. How long have we been live for? <laughs> Wow, we've covered a lot of topics in a short amount of time. Very, very interesting. That was the 13-year-old. Yep. Yep, I think that's the one he went to prison for. I heard from the family. I talked to you guys about this. From the family that Tom Green went to prison for being with that, impregnating that little girl. But then he was on this like house arrest afterwards where he was forced to be in the home with her. Did anyone hear that? So they like make him go to prison for being with her, and then they make him be with her afterwards. It's, I heard this from the family. And I was like, this is so twisted. I don't even understand. Like, why would they put him in prison? Then put, if they're just going to put him back with the, I don't get it. I need to have more, his family tell me more about it because I don't fully understand it. Okay, I'm going to read a few more comments, and then I'm going to go because I, I'm scared that this is going to shut off really quick. Are you doing the Malibu retreat this year? I've had a lot of questions on that. We are planning for uh, around August 2024. Doing, and, and this, the reason we're planning further ahead is because I think it's going to be twice as big and we're going to have have more time to plan for it, <laughs> which it's exciting though. Like I said, there's going to be more people from FLDS. There's going to be more, more bonds that are created, which is going to be really cool. And you guys are going to be taken along for the ride and get to see it all happen which will be exciting. Please, what the product is, it looks really nice. Aw, thank you, Anuma. Okay, Rachel. Stephanie, thank you so much for the donation. So happy I made a live, finally done with my road trip. Oh, I hope you had a good time. I'm glad you're feeling better, Mary. All the SF family reads, not trees, round and round it goes. <laughs> so that is true. ABC revamped. I didn't see that, Denise, but I will go check it out right now, right after this. We're done here. Uh, K is for kissing all the boys. Yep, Rachel. See, Rachel remembers. K is for kiss. I will kiss all the boys I see. That's the only one she knows. <laughs> only one we lived by. Just kidding. 
That's so heartbreaking about the 13 year old. I know. And you can like, it's really sad to hear like the brainwashing runs deep. You can listen to her talk about him and you can see like, it's just grooming. That's all it is. We had enough for two or three completely. I know for ABC World Standards. I know you guys did a good job. You can make Corks of trees. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Are you a member now, Mary? Oh, Mary's been a member for two months. There's so many members on here. It's kind of cool to see. Yeah, if you've been a member for a certain amount of time, then your little stamp next to your name changes, which I don't know if you guys noticed. He was disgusting. I would sh I would share him to get him the hell away from me. A lot of women in the order do that. They hate their husband so much that they cannot wait to share him because they don't like him. <laughs> Maybe that was that was Tom Green's wife's way of saying, um, I just like him so much. I want him to get rid of me. <laughs> Where are we at? Where are we at? Thank you, Flick of Fade. Yes, if you guys like live streams more often, we go live at least twice a week on Patreon. We have a full time over there. We talk about a lot of other things too. Okay, the okay, this is gonna die soon. So I'm gonna have to cut this short, but this week look forward to the biodiesel frog, Big of Kingston. And then um we are going live tomorrow on Patreon if you guys want to join. Thank you.